Hey y'all, let's talk right ascension and declination. We have the grid on the equatorial grid and not the altitude azimuth grid. So you can see that it's centered on this star right here, which is Polaris, the North Star. If we advance time a whole heck of a lot, so let's do this, uh, sorry, 300 times and let time play there. That's not fast enough. Let's go faster. 3000. Now we can make the sky move. You can see that as the night wears on, it's going to appear to rotate the sky. The stars near Polaris appear to rotate in this counterclockwise way because they come up in the east. They try to climb high into the west and set, uh, climb high into the south and then set in the west. But stuff really close to Polaris will just go around like this all night long. Uh, if you're looking west, you'll notice that the everything seems to be going down. And if we're looking east, we notice that everything seems to be coming up and you can see that angle that's based the angle everything seems to be moving is based on your particular latitude you'll notice the north celestial i'm sorry you'll notice the celestial equator right here everything north of that has a declination of zero to plus 90 all the way at the north star and everything south of that has a declination from zero all the way to negative 90 down here and we can't even see it. So that's the declination measurement. The right ascension measurement is along the celestial equator. So those would be these lines right here. And it's broken down into hours because if we, let's go backwards a little bit. I don't want daytime to start and that'll work. So you'll notice as time wears on five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, the reason we've marked the right ascension in hours is because that's how we keep time. We could have done it in degrees, just like the um, altitude and azimuth, but we decided to use hours because knowing what line a star or a galaxy is on in terms of its right ascension can also tell you what time it's going to come up based on the, the timekeeping system you're using. So it's a little bit strange that we use these 24 segments around the, the celestial sphere, but that's how it works. We've decided to cut up the night sky into these declination lines starting at the uh, celestial equator and moving up or celestial equator moving down. So plus from zero to plus 90 in declination, from zero to minus 90 in declination. And we've ha we have these 24 slices all around the sky called the right ascension hours. And um, if we were to set this back to uh, the 22nd and we were to go look for the sun here, let's let time pass a little bit more and let the sun come up. I want you to notice that where the sun is located, the, the spot along here, that particular spot, that's how we determine where the right ascension was gonna be. So if we make this, instead of September, uh, we made it, let's go back to our spring and we'll make it the 21st. Now you'll see it's really, really close to zero. So there's a 23 hour, there's the one hour, there's the zero. So where the sun is along this line, this uh, celestial equator line, that determines what hour we marked. And we decided that the first day of spring would be the beginning of the astronomical year. So that's why we opted to call that zero. So let's go ahead from March. We did September, let's go to June. Sorry, I wanted to show you summer. So you can see that the sun is along the right ascension line for six hours. And then if I go to September, it's now at 12 hours. And so it's gone 90 degrees around from where it was a little while ago. Um, every season advances another six hours, another 90 degrees. And now it's at 18. And if I go to next year's spring, so we're back to zero. So the right ascension is based on where the sun is on that particular day. And just let's do the seasons one more time. Here's March. There's the first day of summer. Notice that the sun is on that the right ascension line, but now it's really far above the celestial equator. There's fall again, where the, the ecliptic crosses the celestial equator. And there's winter again, when the sun is at its lowest point. Okay, I hope that helps clear up a little bit about right ascension and declination.